Hey, this is Pastor Joey Rogers, and I'm glad that you joined us for Prophecy Files On Demand. In this installment, we're going to talk to you about attitudes and the actions that are happening in our world in the last days, and we're witnessing them right now. The Bible says in Ephesians that we would be wrestling with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. We're seeing it in our government and religion in every area, and too many Christians are fighting it on a natural level when it's actually a supernatural fight. It's all prophetic, and it's all this week on Prophecy Files On Demand. Welcome back to Prophecy Files. I hope that you will get the information that's available at paceassembly.org and get the most recent Prophecy Files update. It'll be a blessing to you and share it with others. It's important for us to be ready and serving the Lord until He comes. That's what Prophecy Files is all about, to keep you aware of the great event called the Rapture of the Church that's about to take place. Now after 9-11, the scope and the approach of war changed. For example, in World War II, as long as the battle was being raged on foreign soil and we could identify the enemy by the uniforms that they wore, the American forces could march in and secure freedom. They would take out the enemy, and the mission then was clear because we could identify the enemy. As a child of God, we're in a fight for our lives, and the battles that we are fighting are becoming more and more intense as Satan knows that his time is short. There's no enemy that we can identify by the uh, uniform that they wear, and certainly the attacks come in multiple ways in our life. In fact, the Scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The book of Ephesians 6.12 says that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Notice these four levels, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, the Bible identifies here four levels of demonic evil that is attacking us, that we are engaging on a daily basis. First, the forces of evil are powerful forces, according to the Scripture. The thrust of this particular verse is to stress the enormity of the power of evil forces that we're standing against on a daily basis. Secondly, the forces are evil and are numerous. According to the Scripture, it identifies principalities, powers, rulers. These all convey the idea of a large number of evil forces who are struggling against the believer daily. The forces of evil are apparently organized. According to the Scripture, the government and the hierarchy of evil, uh, principalities, powers, rulers of this world in high places, high places, they all point to a ranking level of spiritual forces that have authority, position, and uh, command rule, without a doubt. The forces of evil are also rulers of darkness, the Bible says. The darkness of this world. Now, realize that darkness in the Bible means the ignorance of truth and reality, uh, the real nature and purpose of a thing. In other words, the dark forces of this world are able to control by uh, the ignorance of the believer. The forces of evil are spiritual forces of wickedness. They seek to receive the loyalty and devotion that are actually due God. Therefore, they are uh, after the spirit of man, that part of the man that is destined to worship and serve God uh, that we can know and we can be able to have a relationship with spirit to spirit. Understand, they do all they can, spiritual forces do, to lead man's spirit away into wickedness. These spiritual forces are forces of wickedness, the Bible calls them. Now our warfare is being fought on three different dimensions. First, the flesh or our sin nature. Second is the devil, Satan himself, and the world system which the devil controls. Now some might say, I don't wanna be in the battle but you already are. Whether you're saved or not, whether you know Jesus or not, you're in the battle. You will be a casualty if you're not a conqueror, and you're fighting on one side or the other today. This is the last day warfare that is very real, 
and as much like the war on terrorism. We can't identify by uniforms or by a certain location. It's everywhere. And it is an invisible war because most don't realize that the battle is raging around them every day. Many don't want to be involved in it or they don't really know who the enemy is. And so they'll point their finger of blame to someone. But actually Satan is the one that we're fighting against. The Bible tells us about this warfare and that the devil is vicious and relentless against every Christian. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5 and 8 that the devil, Satan, is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan uses a variety of attacks, and here's a partial list of that for your understanding. Number one, Satan uses planned schemes and strategies for our destruction, according to Ephesians 6 and 11. Number two, he blinds the minds of unbelievers, according to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, so that they can't hear the gospel. Three, he's the master deceiver and perverter of God's word, 2 Corinthians 11, 3. He disguised himself as an angel of light and his demons as well. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 14, he even masquerades and his ministers, the demons, as angels or ministers of righteousness. According to John 8 and 44, he is the father, the devil is, of lies. Jesus identified him as the father of lies. Number six, he is the accuser of people, Revelation 12 and 10. I've never seen the amount of accusation coming on social media and the media itself today without any kind of support for it. And yet the Bible says that it is Satan at the core who is the accuser of the brethren. Number seven, he has the ability, as God permits, to afflict and torment believers. Job 1 and Job 2 identifies the fact that he is that kind of a relentless uh, evil that is coming against the life of the believer. And yet, Job 1, double for his trouble because God was in complete control. Listen, my friends, as a believer, you are under this kind of attack daily. And without knowledge of how to deal with this attack from hell on your life, you become a victim or a casualty, and that is not God's plan. In fact, the Lord gives us specific instructions about the strength that we're to have in the Lord and the armor of the Lord that we need to win in this daily fight. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6. In fact, it opens up in Ephesians 6, verse 10, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This command to be strong is the present tense. It means to be continually strong. It means to allow yourself to be made continually strong in the Lord and in his might on a daily basis. Satan has already been defeated by Jesus Christ, my friends. It's now a matter of the believer appropriating what Christ has already done on the cross. We are to put the whole armor of God on so when the attack comes on a daily basis, we are able to stand. So the Bible says, put on truth, that's Jesus. Put on righteousness, that's Jesus. Put on peace, that's Jesus. Take up the shield of faith, that's what the Lord has given to us. Put on the helmet of salvation, that's Jesus. Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, that's Jesus. In other words, put on Christ, the Apostle Paul says. And for that reason, and to hold it together is in verse number 18 of Ephesians 6, he adds prayer to every occasion so that we can keep our mind alert. My friends, he is describing the full covering of the Lord around the believer's life, knowing that the attack is going to happen. And every item in the armor is a picture of what Christ has fought and died for and won for us on the cross. Now, after you put on Christ, the Bible says in, in Ephesians 6 and 13, after you've done it all, when you put Christ on, stand after you've done everything you know how to do. The time to stand is now. Standing your ground and not giving place to the devil, according to the book of Ephesians, is where you need to be positioned. It's at the cross, placing your faith there. You stand in the victory of Christ and what he has done at the cross. That positional power in Jesus Christ and being filled with the Spirit is what gives you strength to stand day by day to resist the enemy, and the Bible says he must flee. Your affections and your emotions will certainly become involved in this battle, but whatever you do, 
Don't trust your emotions and affections. Stand in truth against the enemy, not by how you feel, because Satan is already defeated and he knows it. And the only place of his defeat is where Jesus made a show of him openly, and that's where he triumphed over him at the cross. That is the victory place. So in these last days, as we are close to the coming of the Lord, don't slip into an apathetic mindset or try to sit out the battle on the bench. It's time to be sober, alert, and aware of the daily fight and realize what 1 John 4 and 4 says, you're of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want to thank you for joining us for Prophecy Files this week. I look forward to being back with you again. And until then, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon. <laughs>